Welcome to Weld.com. Hey, we built a lot of stuff over the years for smokers and little wood racks and stuff. I think we did a video here recently on some math on um, you know, doing stuff on 45s. We were getting that, um, like the length on a 45, I believe we used the constant 1.414 as a quick bang up measurement, blow and go without having to do all the Pythagorean theorem thing. And, and then this recent video, I believe we had to use the inverse because what we were trying to do was customer requested that this be so wide, 12 inches, I believe it was. And we wanted to break this up, you know, and um, so in order to figure that out, we're losing, we're losing a little bit here. And, and I believe the inverse of that, one divided by four, 1.414 is 0.707. So if I took, uh, I think the measurements were five inches. If I took five inches times 0.707, then that was gonna be my run in this direction here. And in any event, all these 22 and a half degree angles come out to the 45 and it gives us our 12 inch. I've pre-cut material. This is inch and a quarter square tubing, 14 gauge, thin wall stuff. Um, this is gonna be a little pup wood rack, okay? It's going to go with a smoker that I'm gonna build for my son for his graduation and he's going to the army. So when he gets back, he'll have him a nice little wood burner. I've got tons of split pecan out here at my house. So this smoker will go together. The little pup wood rack will go next to it that have all these small splits that we're gonna go in, uh, gonna go in the smoker. Uh, he might get lucky and get a couple of real comfortable Adirondack chairs to go with it, but that's woodworking, you know. Anyway, um, about, I've got some things pre-cut, pre-cleaned. About the only thing that I'm gonna do real quick is, I'm gonna go ahead and cap the end of these. I've cut them off at 22 and a half degrees so that it's not just a square thing and I'm capping them off just to seal them up from atmosphere. So I wanna make these welds around here. If I do anything to them, I may just lightly hit them with the sander. I'm not gonna do anything else to any of the other welds on here because uh, I'm, uh, it's just a, a thin wall tubing. If I run the filler wire in here, it's gonna be 1 16th ER70S6. Uh, I'm running off an Everlast 200 DV. I've got uh, 332 tungsten. Got me a custom handle here from the old cameraman juice me up here. I'm not sure the purple thing, but is that K-State purple? K-State. You need to do this in OU Sooner Red here, match the hose. That'd be cool. Anyway, uh, you know, non-critical application, but a really cool project. Got a little math involved in it. The, you know, the attempt is to fit things up straight and square. So let me get some sleeves on the hood. We'll come back and, and start welding. Be right back. Uh, welcome back. I went ahead and tacked up. I, I welded the caps on the uh, bottom shoe there and I went ahead and tacked up and I am straight and square. And so I'm gonna go ahead and sister the other one right on top of this since I know it's good. Actually, I think what I'll do is turn this over. I have tacks on the very top and in the corners down low. So I may just turn it over and sister the other piece on top of it so that they're exactly the same. The last thing I'm gonna do is put a couple of spacers underneath it and square this up, up top, square the ends. So as I turn this over, I have fresh flat surface here and I can stack my parts in here. Do two of them exactly the same. Built a bunch of these over the years. I actually have, I think I have, and I've built them a lot of different sizes, lengthwise. Height, I probably stay, I like to stay about uh, three foot tall. I don't like to go the full four for a Rick, four by eight Rick but three foot by six is a, what I build a lot of them. They, send to, they tend to stay 
a little more stable. I have um, eight of them around my house that are stacked with firewood for the shop or split pecan for smoking. Now, we've done these out of an um, inch and a half pipe as well for some customers that provide some material. And, <clears throat> and when we start doing that, we'll go ahead and build a jig. Depends on how many we do at a time. We've set the magnets up to build the jig or we've gone ahead and built a plate so that we can make them all the same for building six or eight of them at a time. Good fundraiser item too. I'm only running 100 amps here and I'm not using all of it. I may, I've done a bunch of these where after it's tacked up, make all these welds, we'll do a pulse type weld across it. So we may turn this over to pulse here in a minute. Now, before I put this together, I probably want to weld these out so that I can turn them and manipulate them, just finish them out, make all the welds look the same. It's comfortable to sit right here instead of standing them up, fitting them, which we've done that before too. It just makes it a little harder when you're trying to, um, oh, like we're trying to make all these welds. Some of them are overhead, not that big a deal, but it just makes it easier when you slide them over the table and do them uphill or something right here in front of you. By the way, I've done these with MIG as well. It's not that big a deal, kind of fun. All right, so I'll set one of these off to the side. We'll flip it over. Let's have a little fun, go over to Pulse. I'm gonna have to turn my background amperage way up. Probably do about, I don't know, five to 10 pulses per second. Uh, I'll come back and tell you what I'm comfortable with. Let me go off camera and set this machine up for Pulse. I'll be right back. All right, I'm ready to rock and roll here. I, I switched this up to Pulse just to have a little fun here. I have, uh, as you can see, camera, uh, this was stock that has been outside. It's got some light rust on it. And after I cut my 22 and a half degree but, uh, angles on here, I went over to the, the wire wheel on the pedestal grinder and cleaned that off real quick. It's it's fine for the weld area. I'll wipe this down and maybe throw some vinegar on it and get the rust off if we primer and paint later on. 150 on my amperage now so that I can take care of the pulse. I'm five pulses per second, 50% background, 50% on time. Uh, got the Furic number 12 on here, gas lens, 332nd tungsten, 116th filler wire. As I weld these, I will more than likely turn this to get, you know, to manipulate, get comfortable. I think we're getting ready to go fast motion here so we don't spend a bunch of time on camera, but you know, these welds are gonna go across here. So I'll be turning this a little bit to keep it right here in front of me. All righty, let's have some fun, shall we? Also, as this thing heats up a little bit, I will, uh, I'll either do one of two things. I think I did a video uh, recently where I was talking about putting a clamp on something and everybody goes, well, what are you using that for? Well, as this material heats up, I might put that clamp on there and rest my hand on it. Or, got a cool item here from Torchware, a little heat pad. Man, I'm telling you, I love this thing. I love this for welding pipe. Put it against my forearm, so cool products get comfortable if I failed to mention um, we intend to leave these welds alone there's no reason to sand and finish like some of our work we do but hey it's a wood rack you know what I mean no reason to finish it out now, if you'll notice I'm doing 
since I'm doing this left-handed so everybody can see, I'm welding here and going away from me. If I started here, then I'd be laying my wrist or my hand on hot material all the time. Work smarter. Doing a little dab technique across there. Very subtle technique. I don't know if you're picking it up on camera here. You'll see me wrapping corners all the time. I'll start the arc in here, push the tungsten around and come back across it because I don't like holes in corners. Backing off the amperage here because I'm in a confluence of that rounded edge on that tubing. Kudos to the cameraman for the custom handle. He did a good job. I wonder if the guy will come on and comment that he usually does this thin wall tubing with a 500 amp machine and 045 wire or something. That was a fun comment. I guess the only thing I got going for me is I'm not going to sand my welds this time. Haters. Man, that was almost a Davy Blackburn weld right there. <clears throat> Y'all know Davy Blackburn, don't you? I'm laying my wrist on here. I get the uncontrollable shake, look like a puppy pooping peach seeds. Getting old and shaky. There you go, Davy Blackburn. There's your laugh. Hope you didn't. Hope you didn't snort that Guinness out when I made you laugh there. I'm wondering if this. I'm wondering if I'm the only one this happens to. Y'all welding on something and. It's like your part gets to shaking. It's like the energy going through your part starts shaking. Boom, there's one. Completely welded out. No holes in the corners. Small welds, paint up just nicely. I'm gonna go off camera, we'll probably do the other one. I'll come back up, we'll, uh, we'll fit this thing up and I'll show you how everything goes, we'll square it up. The, the last part of it is just the fillet welds around the square tube here. Plus I'll need to clean where those intersect into here. So when I put my spacers up there, I'll mark where they, where they go back after a while. Uh, welcome back. We're on the downside of our build here. A couple of things to note. After I got the ends sistered, both of them are the same. I went ahead and pulse welded the thin walled tubing in here and uh, just gonna leave the welds, it's cool. A uh, couple of things that happened here is kind of convenient when you're working off of the sort of flat tables here. Get to use the holes, get to use the edge of the table. I went ahead and did the magnet thing just to stand them up. Uh, these guys here are just spacers. I'll pull them out in a minute, but I wanted to leave it here for just a second. You know, the, the two ends were exactly the same. By setting the magnet in here and tacking it in a corner, I was still able to flex that and move it around. Uh, we're square here. We're square here. And then the last thing to note was 29 and 3 eighths to a point. 29 and 3 eighths to a point, so we're square everywhere. We'll get rid of these. Get rid of these, get rid of our spacers and we've got us a little pup wood rack that um, <coughs> 27 and a quarter by uh, we're 22 tall but you can see that we'll put some split pecan in here or our smoking well I like to cook with a lot of pecan it's easy to get around here pecan and hedge 
Uh, hedge burns very hot, so we use a lot of that around here for our heat. We have a lot of fruit wood around here too, but we'll do all kinds of splits and put them in here and it'll go real good with the size smoker that I'm gonna build. So <clears throat> I've done some of these that are long eight footers, you know, for a whole rick, eight foot by four foot. And you can imagine what happens in the middle when you get that much weight on there. I tend to go ahead and put another shoe in here, which requires a little standoff so that when you get this thing loaded, it doesn't really flex down anymore. Anyway, that's the fit up and that's the build. So the last thing we've got to do is come in here and weld our tubing up and we're done. Don't think we're going to do anything here uh, as far as the welds. Have to look, make sure my corners are all wrapped. Other than that, it's just wipe it off and primer and paint if we want to protect it, or we can just let it go to patina. We can let it rust. So anyway, I will go ahead and finish these welds out. Fun little build, use a little math, square tubing, TIG welding, it's all kind of fun, satisfying to get some practical project that we can use around the house. It'll last a long time. So uh, again, you know, if you got questions on something you're doing layout, uh, some use for some square tubing, uh, you know, let us know if we can help out in any way. We're, we're learning ourselves here, building stuff and putting stuff together. It's always a challenge when you get something worked up and use some math. So appreciate you watching. Subscribe to the videos. Thanks for watching Weld.com. What was that? Oh, that's rude. I hope you're filming because I just got stuck in the butt with something. Booyah, we done.